Lopez wants it away. And it's a deep to left center. Andrew Jones on the run. This one has a chance. Home run. Mike Piazza. And the Mets lead. Three to two. Bartolo has done it. The impossible has happened. This is one of the great moments in the history of baseball. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Mets fans of all ages, here is your host, Nick. Hello, Mets fans. Welcome back to another edition of Believe in the Mets. I'm your host, Nick Durst, and you can tell I'm being pretty somber right now. I am dressed in black, and we are gathered here today to mourn the loss of the 2024 season for the New York Mets. Yamamoto, no. Yoshinobu Yamamoto says, no, 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 I am not coming to Queens. He did not want to be here. And it's very unfortunate that the Mets are now in this situation that they are in. And it's going to be a really tough 2024 season. I would be stunned if they compete even for a wild card. I think they're closer to a last place team that a playoff team has currently constructed. And I'll dive more into that roster in a little bit. But on Yamamoto here, I've been saying it for weeks now. I really thought that the reason it was leaked out that Steve Cohen and David Stearns went to Japan and that they were at Steve Cohen's house last weekend for dinner was because the Mets, they got this sense that they were not going to get him. So they wanted to just put out some good PR that we tried. And to their credit, they did, in fact, have the highest offer. They matched the same offer the Dodgers had, which was... 12 years or $325 million. But he didn't want to be here. The saving grace is, thank goodness he's not a Yankee. He's going to be well, excited just with the Dodgers. The Dodgers will probably choke again in the playoffs, losing the wild, the uh, the divisional round, and be out of there. So don't have to worry about that. But it's ridiculous what the Dodgers are able to do now, cheating the luxury tax with the Otani deal. Now they get Yamamoto. We hear Yamamoto wanted to be a star. He wanted to be the best player on the team. Well, that's not going to happen with the Dodgers. They have of course, him now, but they have Otani, they have Freeman, they have Betts. Glass now they added to the rotation, so they're looking good on paper, but it's a rough, tough pill to swallow for the Mets fans right now as we're just getting screwed over and over again, and we kept hearing, oh, they're going to be competitive in 2024. I don't see how they're going to be competitive with the way the roster currently is. We kept talking uh, on the show about the Steve Cohen effect and, and, it, and what that means in free agency. Well, it means that, and we saw it with Steven Matz, that the Mets are going to get played. They're going to get Steve Cohen involved agents to drop the asking price higher and higher. And that's what the Dodgers did. That's what Wolf did with Yamamoto. And they probably got the Mets to a comfortable position where they wanted the money 12 years for $325 million. They go back to the Dodgers, hey, if you match this Mets offer, it's good to go. We're coming to the Dodgers, and that's what happened. Steve Cohen and the Mets got played. It's unfortunate, but that is what happened here. And it's just a sad day to be a Mets fan. When you're looking at this roster, there's no way they're going to compete this year. The Marlins are better. The Phillies are better, and the Braves are better. So you're looking at a fourth-place team in the division. Very tough to make the playoffs when you're looking around the rest of the NL. There's some good teams out there. And the Mets, they're preaching to us. David Stearns, we're going to be competitive in 2024. How? How are you going to be competitive with this roster when all of your moves in the offseason so far have been acquiring guys who are coming off career worst or bad years? The Mets, they're getting praised for acquiring Adrian Hauser by guys like Andy Martino saying the Mets are flexing their big market money. What are you talking about? If you're getting this guy, Adrian Hauser, Maybe you want to ideally have him as a swing man, someone in the bullpen, some depth in the minor leagues when somebody gets hurt. But no, Adrian Hauser is going to be in the middle of the Mets rotation. And tell me how that's a good thing, Mets fans. Tell me, because I don't understand. Adrian Hauser, 412 ERA in 2023. That's not good. That's not going to help you compete. 473 ERA in 2022. So there's a little progress there. But his career is four. That is not a winning formula unless you're talking about maybe a fifth starter. Right now, he is the third starter, the fourth starter. The Mets rotation is in shambles. Their big signing this offseason 
was Luis Severino, another Yankees cast off. He had a 6.65 ERA in 2023. How was that any good? And he only pitched in 45 games dating back to 2018. Always injured, always injury prone. Tell me, Mets fans. Tell me. How is that a good thing? How is that a winning formula for relying on those two guys in your rotation? Quintana, he was good when he was back from the injury last year, but is he going to be healthy the whole year? Who knows? Senga, we know, sensational. He's the ace. This is a really weak rotation. You're getting guys with ERAs last year in the fours and sixes to a rotation with a guy like Tyler McGill, who has shown great flashes but had some issues as well, and Lucchese, who is injury prone, and when he has pitched, hasn't been that great. Peterson's out, but when he pitched last year, he had a terrible ERA. Budo's been awful. How is this going to be a rotation that's going to be a competitive team? Again, this competitive team nonsense kills me because it does not mean they're looking to compete. What does competitive mean? They're not going to lose 90 games? I, I don't know. I, right now, I look at this team with their power rotation, the horrible offense, and their terrible bullpen. I don't know how this team's going to win more than 74, 75, 76 games. They, bullpen... It's terrible. Kudos to Adam Adovino. He saw the writing on the world. He opted out. He saw the writing on the wall. On the wall. He was like, I'm getting out of here. I don't want to be part of this Mets organization with the first-time manager and Carlos Mendoza. And he's gone. The bullpen is awful right now. I know Diaz is coming back. But look at look at some of these guys. They signed for the bullpen or traded for. And we're getting sold. Oh, they're going to bounce back here. Jorge Lopez. Oh, he was an all-star years ago with the Orioles. I don't care. He was terrible last year. 5.95 ERI in 2023. And a 5.51 career earned on average. Is that good? Do we want to see this guy in high leverage situations? I don't think so. Johan Ramirez, they just traded for him from the White Sox. 4.23 ERI in 2023. Is that good? Is that an ERA that you can rely on late innings in the game to try to get the ball to Edwin Diaz? And they signed Michael Tonkin. We discussed it earlier on the show, earlier episode. 4.28 ERA in 2023, a 4.37 career ERA. I don't care how good Edwin Diaz is. If you can't get him the ball with the lead, it's not going to matter. His saves are going to be down this year because there's not going to be many chances where the Mets are getting for, going for a save because their starting pitching is weak. These guys are going to give you maybe five innings and they're going to be losing. They hand it over to a bullpen and they're going to be blowing leads or giving up more runs. So great. Diaz is back. We're all excited for that. Cue the trumpets. But how often are you going to hear that when the Mets are not going into the ninth inning with a lead? And that seems like that's what's going to be the case based on these acquisitions and their ERAs. Offensively, the Mets offense has been an issue. It was bad last year. It was bad at the end of 2022 against the Braves, against the Padres. They needed to go out this offseason. They should have last year and added to the offense. Get somebody who can hit some home runs. Get somebody who can get on base. They need some power. They need somebody who could drive in runs. And they don't have that on the roster right now. And their big acquisition so far offensively, they sign Trace Thompson, Clay Thompson's brother. He batted 163 last year, okay? 163. And he's a career 212 hitter. That is not a recipe for success. And they traded in the trade with the Brewers, Hauser trade. They got Tyrone Taylor. He batted 234 last year as a career 239 hitter. That's not good. If you want to have him as the fifth outfielder, sure. But if he's making 30 starts, he can't even hit. I understand he's great defensively. Have him on the bench. Right now, he might start for this team. You're looking at this team right now where you have Nemo in center, Marte in right. And who's going to be in left? Is it going to be Taylor? Is Stewart going to be out there? I don't understand what is going on here. It's December 22nd right now. The year is almost over. The calendar year. And 2024, I think, is going to be a really bad one for the New York Mets. I'd be very cautiously, not even cautiously optimistic. I uh, just be really pessimistic going into this season, watching this. And it, it's crazy that in, in the midst of all this chaos yesterday with the Mets getting these guys off the scrap heave, I'll say, and losing any Yamamoto, they're texting Mets fans say, oh, the perfect holiday bundle is here. 
pick your three games, the best gift you can give for the holidays. Why would I want to waste my money and time to go to City Field to watch this team that's not going to be competitive? You're going to buy tickets that I need to drive there and sit in hours of traffic, pay an extraordinary amount of money for parking, then go in the stadium, and then pay so much money for food, and then sit in traffic getting out of the stadium. And it's just ridiculous. It's not going to be worth it. I did not go to one game this past season. I said so to my friends as we were leaving the wild card series game three when the Mets got eliminated in 2022. I said, if they don't fix this offense, I'm not coming back. I'm on strike. The strike continues because this offense is terrible. Look at the lineup right now. It's awful. If you go into this season and you have the same lineup essentially as last year, minus Vogelback, and you're not adding, you know, like a big power hitter. How, how do you anticipate being competitive? The Mets weren't competitive last year. And I'm looking at the rosters right now. The roster that ended last year is better than the roster that's going to start this year. So I'm just sick. I'm sick to my stomach that I'm going to have to suffer through another season of Mets losing baseball. It's been enough. It's been enough losing. Win now, win later. That's the way I think it should have been. And for David Stearns, guys. Number one, he gets rid of Buck Showalter, thinks he's getting counsel. Mets got played. The coast did current effect. Counsel ups the ante, gets the money from the Cubs. He goes there, settles on Carlos Mendoza, who comes off a bench coach career with the Yankees where they underachieved. They missed the playoffs last year and their worst season in 30 years. He's the head coach now. That was the first sign to tell you, Mets fans, and me as a Mets fan, that the Mets are not going to be competitive. In 2024, they're going with a first-time manager who's going to grow with the team. So, strike one. Strike two, not even being involved in Otani. Not even making an offer, whether he wanted to be here or not. And strike three, not getting out Moto. Stern's already struck out. There's one out now in, in the inning. And now he's on his neck. He's up to his next batter here. So, <laughs> the next step at... If he has nothing in his offseason, that's another strike. And then if he trades Pete Alonzo, that's it. There's really no coming back from that for David Stearns unless you win the World Series. Mets fans are going to turn on him instantly if he, turn, if he trades Pete Alonzo. And trading Pete Alonzo in this, in this season, I think, is highly likely because the Mets are not going to be competitive. They're not going to be in the mix going for the wild card. So when they get to around the trade deadline, they'll be way out of everything. They're going to be a losing record team. And then they're going to trade Pete Alonso, and that's going to be it. And that's going to be waving the white flag that really the Mets are going into a rebuild. Now, I hope I'm wrong. I hope they keep Pete Alonso. I hope they can be competitive this year. I doubt it. And I hope next year in the offseason, they open up the checkbook. They sign Zach Wheeler. They get Garrett Cole if he opts out of his contract. They, they sign Corbin Burns. They get some power. Because unless they fix the rotation and unless they fix the bullpen, and unless they fix the offense, the three keys to a baseball team, they're not going to win. And that is a very sad thing for us long-suffering Mets fans. Give us a break already. Try to win a World Series. Jeez, shouldn't be taking any years off. A lot of pressure right now going to be on these young guys in the system coming up. All these shortstops. Jet Williams, Drew Gilbert, Luis Sanhel Acuna. That's supposed to come up and produce right away. I don't think it's going to happen. We didn't see it with Vientos. We didn't see it with Beatty. It's tough to transition to the major leagues. Trade some of these guys while their value is high and they're not exposed in the majors. And get some quality players in here who are all-star level and can actually lead the team to be competitive. Very sad stuff. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for mourning. Hope you like that eulogy of the, the Mets with their offseason in 2024. For those that celebrate, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. We'll be back next week with an episode, one more episode for the year. But until next time, Mets fans, let's just hope for the best. And let's go, Mets. And make sure you are following us on social media at Believe in the Mets. B-L-E-I-V-I-N-T-H-E-M-E-T-S. Follow us on all social media platforms. Of course, subscribe to YouTube. You don't want to miss an episode. And we're all the Apple iHearts.
Spotify's were there too. Follow me on Twitter at Nick underscore Durst and on Instagram, Nick Spoon Stuff. Send us a tweet. Send me a tweet. Leave a comment lo- below. Like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think the Mets are going to be good in 2024? I unfortunately don't think so. Take care, everybody. And let's go Mets. Thank <laughs> you.